Hello, my name is John Luttrell. I'm a housing program supervisor with the City of Fresno's Code Enforcement Division. And today I'm gonna to be reading a book to you called Graffiti and Tahiti by Victoria Wilson Merritt. Tossed about by the waves, a box bobbed up and down past white caps and breakers, it was tossed round and round. Till finally it rested atop a sea urchin's spine, surrounded by sea lettuce covered with green slime. What is it? cried Tom the turtle, trembling with fear. Can it move? he asked out loud, afraid to get too near. He crept up to the box, careful not to make a sound. I see no tail, no fins, no teeth, I wonder what I found. Just then he heard a scary noise that put him on alert. It was the wild splashing of a white shark known as Bert. Taking a shortcut, Bert crashed through a seaweed wall. He winked at Tom, this can't hurt you. It's way too small. I'll catch it for our supper. Stand back, it may fight. After a chomp or two, a squirt of paint came into sight. Bert counted the spray cans, each and every one. He knew that with these cans, he'd have all kinds of fun. Developing a style, Bert sprayed paint on the sand. With a grin on his face, he said, I've got a cool plan. I'll write chomp, cause I have lots of teeth. <clears throat> I'll spray it everywhere as we swim through the reef. I will be famous, at very least well known. My mark seen, seen high and low on all the shells and stone. Come join me, Tommy said. Come join me, Tom said Bert, who was hiding in the weeds. I'll teach you how to make your mark. You're just the help I need. They painted everything in reach, but little did they know that when you paint a coral reef, the reef dies and does not grow. The coral had turned purple, quite a ghastly hue. It was no longer lovely shades of yellow, red, and blue. It's called graffiti, said the clam, but it is it art or crime? Graffiti hurts fish near and far, Louise the lobster whined. Our reef is slowly dying now, forcing many out to sea. If something is not done and quick, we, we may all be forced to flee. Ringing his fins, Quincy the clownfish stammered and stuttered. M -m My friends and I are, are, are very s -s scared and so are many others. It's so sad, moaned a, moaned a clam. Our reef has begun to rot. Take a look around you. Our coral homes have gone to pot. Bert's graffiti isn't a prank. It's harmful and mean. The damage is much larger than our reef has ever seen. Bert and Tom should have to pay. This we do not question. Cleaning up what they have done may teach a helpful lesson. Hiding in the tall seagrass, Bert heard the group's alarm. He muttered to himself, is there really any harm? Bert slipped away to warn his friend, uncertain of their fate. The rocky sea caves would conceal them. There they would hide and wait. Police fish went to search the reef, their mission plain and clear. Bert and Tom must be stopped. Reef fish refused to live in fear. The graffiti gang was rounded up and told about their rights. Police asked Bert and Tom, why do you cause such decay and blight? We want to be famous, to have glory, not blame. Our graffiti is pretty. We only wanted fame. Bert and Tom were taken back to face the angry crowd. How could you disappoint us so? The reef folk asked out loud. The elderly crab hushed the group and asked Bert to explain how graffiti gave them power and risked 
gave them fame. Young fish need more things to do, grumbled Bert in dismay. When school lets out and homework's done, we have no place to play. If adult fish would only listen and treat us with respect, we wouldn't have the need to make such a visible effect. The crowd thought about their words, but Bert had missed the boat. Playtime shouldn't hurt the reef. Poor Bert had failed to note. These two young fish made mistakes. This could not be denied. But Bert's complaints do make sense. The crowd knew deep inside. Do not worry, said the crab. There is a solution. We need to work together to stop this pollution. All agreed with a nod. Their work was far from done. Trouble seems to find young fish when they need good kinds of fun. Soap filled buckets and fin, cleanup crews went out far and wide. They scrubbed till it hurt, swishing their tails from side to side. Swimming through the coral reef, fish splashed to and fro. With lots of work and effort, the stains began to go. Don't give up, said the crab. Soon we'll see big change. In time our ocean home will no longer look so strange. And as for Bert and Tom, they were asked to help the town recover from graffiti that had turned the seaside brown. They volunteered their time till fins were tired and sore, cleaning litter, washing shells, and scrubbing sandy floors. Working every weekend, Bert finally understood that fame gained this way was a price and graffiti is not good. So if you're ever snorkeling when visiting Tahiti, search throughout the coral reef and try to spot graffiti. I doubt that you will find a sign of Bert's misguided ways. The coral reef is graffiti free, allowing brighter days. The end.